I'm Brian Christner, and this is The Byte, a bite-sized podcast about containers, cloud, and tech. Welcome back to The Byte. In this episode, we're going to be talking about API Umbrella, an open source platform that allows you to manage all your APIs in one spot. Now, this is something that I was turned on to just recently, and I'm actually blown away. I mean, I've, I was experimenting with a bunch of other API providers, and they're all great, don't get me wrong. But uh, it took a lot of configuration. You always had to install additional plugins, and you just had to do a lot of steps to get to like a production-ready state. Now, API Umbrella was actually designed and developed by the National was it the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Golden, Colorado. So they're a United States government entity that built this platform and in the documentation they actually say this platform is being used by none other than api.gov so basically one of the the largest uh, APIs that the US government uses and they're using it to front end all their APIs there I mean they have like 200,000 different data sets that they're managing and when you log in, you notice right away that the, the interface and the API token provisioning is actually the same exact UI as API Umbrella. Now back to API Umbrella, I mean, I, I have it installed. It is quite uh, easy to get up and running. And once it's up and running, you can actually uh, go into configuration and you can walk through like website backends. And this allows you to like, uh, you know, point the server that's come ingress to the, the target server. So basically where your, your visitors are visiting, they come in through the front door and then you route them to whatever website backend you want. And an example, I used uh, my website and I routed the, the traffic from my website to like Google Maps as an example. Now, once you have that done, you can go to API backends and the backends here you can actually specify the protocol between the front end and the back end, uh, the front end host, the back end host, and then you can do matching URL prefixes. So basically if I have mywebsite.com forward slash maps, I can map it to Google Maps forward slash maps. This is where we can do some uh, URL prefixing, which allows us to exactly specify the URL string that the, the user will get on the front end and then map it to the back end. This is all out of the box, so you don't have to do anything special. Uh, it also comes with rate limiting and caching, so you can just, uh, based on if you want the cus- consumers to have API keys, which is also available in here, so you, right in the front door of uh, API Umbrella, you can actually provision API keys to your users. If you don't want to go down that road, you can say uh, disable and then set rate limits on unauthorized users. And that's also just baked in by default. Really, really clever. I took this a bit further. Um, uh, the user authentication for the admin portal, I actually set up with uh, GitLab authentication. So I, I made a new application within GitLab and now my users are actually authenticated via GitLab, which is really slick. So you have admin users, you have normal users, which so you can manage the different APIs and there's scopes so you can limit uh, what they can see, etc. Now, the most amazing part of this is the analytics. The analytics is like Elasticsearch, and it's really nice. I mean, first off, when you click on it, you go API drill down, and you can see the path that people uh, took to get into your application. So in my case, it's like mywebsite.com. I click on it, and I can see exactly each URL and how many hits are in each one. Very clever. As I go through the different UI options, you can go filter logs. It gives you like detailed logs, you know, everything from number of hits, unique IP users, how many IP addresses, the average response time. And it gives you like a query engine where you can actually query down. You can also look by users. um, So you can query by if they're using API tokens, you can say, okay, how many actually uh, requests is this user using first name, last name, and the description. You can also see by location. So if if they're actually visiting your application from externally, you can see their IP, which is not exactly reliable, but you can at least narrow it down to maybe a country where they're actually arriving into your application. Like I said, it's very well documented API umbrella. I mean, I chose it because 
it contains everything. It's super easy to manage. It also allows you to scale. I mean, the US government uses it for their APIs, so that kind of tells you something. So you can start as like a, a normal deployment, and as you go on, if you want to break out the web front end, you can do that. If you want to break out the proxy, if you want to break out the database or Elasticsearch, you can, it allows you to break out each component as you will and put it into a different server or a different container. Uh, you can deploy it multiple different ways, bare metal directly onto Linux, Mac, whatever you, or you can deploy with a container. Um, I found it just an all-inclusive uh, platform. It's going to be my go-to API management platform for now on. And I really encourage everybody to go check it out, apiumbrella.io. I'll put the links in the show notes. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Byte. You can find the show notes at thebyte.io and follow me on Twitter at I do my own tricks.